Rusty and I were chatting the other day about a good topic for the next video. And in response to all the comments we got about the adjustable negative feedback loop in the little scrap built Fender Champ chassis that was featured in several recent videos, we thought that maybe the design and function of negative feedback loops and uh, covering what a presence control really is might be a couple of interesting topics. If you agree, then please stay tuned. Hey Rusty, look at that clock on the wall. Looks like it's time for another video. Okay, let's take a look at the original schematic for the uh, 5E1 chassis of the Fender Champ. And uh, this is the negative feedback loop right here. It comes out of the secondary of the output transformer. And the strength of the uh, negative feedback signal is reduced with a 22K resistor. And then it is applied down here to the cathode of the second stage of the 12AX7 preamp tube. Now the cathode and the grid are out of phase, uh, which what this means is if you remember your positive and negative numbers from math, it's like the signal is being applied here to the grid and we'll say that that's a positive signal. A certain amount of negative signal is being applied down here to the cathode. Okay, and that will effectively neutralize or subtract from the positive signal to reduce its strength somewhat before it goes to the plate and then on to the grid of the output tube. Now to make the negative feedback variable, I put a potentiometer into the negative feedback loop, a 50K pot, and Instead of a 22K resistor, I put a 10K resistor. Now, uh, this is how it works. When you turn the pot all the way down here so there is no resistance, you still have 10K of resistance limiting the negative feedback. You don't want too much. You never want 100% negative feedback. So this 10K resistor is the minimum. And then as I crank the pot to higher and higher resistance, I can get up to a 60K total resistance, 10 plus 50. So with this arrangement, uh, if the pot is set to minimum resistance, I have 10K, which is about half of the 22K that was originally uh, in the circuit. And with the pot at maximum resistance, I have about 60K here in series. Uh, so that I'm bracketing the original 22K from about half to three times, which gives me a broad range here of uh, different amounts of negative feedback. Now here's the results that you'll see when you set the uh, feedback setting at a very high amount of negative feedback and a very low amount. Now you can actually hear this in action if you watch the video. I put a, I'll put a link in the description of this video which will lead you to that CHAMP sound test in which I vary the amounts of negative feedback and uh, between the 14th minute and 17th minute of that video you will actually hear these effects. The effects of having a whole lot of negative feedback are first of all you'll decrease the gain Frequency response will be more linear, which will be more like hi-fi. It's like you've equalized it. If it's high on the bass and high on the treble, you've brought everything down to a level or linear frequency response. Tone is more controlled. There's a lot less distortion, if any. And this is true even at higher volumes. If you have very low negative, negative feedback or none, the gain will go way up. Frequency response is less linear. You can have bass and treble or mid-range boosting. And the tone uh, will seem more distorted and the distortion will occur even at relatively lower volumes. Now the question has arisen a few times in comments addressed to the 
uh, CHAMP video uh, about whether or not this variable negative feedback loop is a presence control. To answer that question, I think we need to take a look at what the presence control looked like in the schematic of some of those early Fender amps, like the Twin, the Baseman, and the Bandmaster. Now, here's the schematic for an early Fender Twin. Now, here is the negative feedback loop, and instead of 22K, they use a 56K resistor right here. And it looks like the Champ uh, negative feedback loop. It comes back here and feeds into the cathode of the 12AX7, just like the CHAMP loop did. Except, look right up here. There's a little addition, and this is the presence control. The presence control is really quite simple. It consists of a 5K pot with the wiper connected to a 0.1 microfarad capacitor that goes to ground. Low-value capacitors like this will readily pass high frequencies and block low frequencies. So depending on the setting here of the pot, more or less of the high frequency that's present in the negative feedback signal will go to ground. If we have the pot wiper set all the way up here with no resistance, then almost all of the high frequency will go to ground. If we have it set down here, then only some of it will go to ground. Bear in mind then, once we've taken out the high frequency, what's left? The low frequency. It will continue on down here, out of phase, to the cathode of the 12AX7, and neutralize the low frequencies that are present here from the signal. So it may seem a little counterintuitive, but if we remove the high frequency from the negative feedback loop, then only the low frequency will continue to neutralize low frequencies in the 12AX7, and only the high frequencies will pass through. So elimination of high frequency here means boosting or enhancing of high frequencies here. So in conclusion, uh, I think you'll see that the addition of a variable negative feedback loop in an amplifier has uh, some definite applications and that really since it does not control specific frequencies like the presence control did in the original Fender amps this is really not a presence control. The variable negative feedback loop is not selective. When you adjust this potentiometer you're affecting all of the output frequencies equally. When you adjust the presence control, however, you are affecting only the high frequencies. Perhaps you could come up with a circuit that had the best of both worlds. Put your variable negative feedback potentiometer here, and then also have the presence control. So you would have global negative feedback control and high frequency specific presence control. Well that about does it for today's video uh, featuring negative feedback loops and presence controls. I hope uh, it was interesting, informative, and that uh, it was clearly explained. I appreciate the time you spent watching this video. I'd appreciate it if you subscribed to my channel if you haven't already, and I would really like to see you again in the near future. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.